How's it going everyone? My name is RJ and today I'm breaking down what's probably one of my favorite clean, budget friendly and aesthetic desk setups I've put together in a while. And the centerpiece? The new M4 Mac Mini. If you're the kind of person who values a clutter free space but also needs enough power to handle creative workflows, whether that's video editing, photo editing or just multitasking like crazy, this setup might be right up your alley. Everything on my desk setup was picked intentionally, not just to look good but to also create a productive environment that still respects your budget. From this ultra wide 34 inch BenQ monitor to the Nufi Halo 96 keyboard with those buttery smooth Gatoron bronze switches to the FlexiSpot E7 Pro standing desk and even the OBSpot Me2 camera. Every piece here serves a purpose without breaking the bank. So if you're planning your own desk revamp or maybe you're just curious about how the base M4 Mac Mini holds up in a creator's workflow, stick around. This setup might give you a few ideas for your next upgrade. Just a quick heads up, if you guys enjoy videos like this, I'd love it if you guys could subscribe. I'm pushing for the 100k mark this year and honestly every sub helps more than you know. All right let's dive into this desk setup. So starting with the monitor this is the BenQ PD3420Q. This thing is honestly one of the most impressive pieces of the setup especially if you're a creative. The 34 inch ultra wide display gives you a ton of screen real estate which really helps when you're working on long editing timelines in Final Cut Pro or bouncing between different apps and windows. What stands out the most here is the color accuracy. BenQ really dialed in the calibration calibration on this one. So what you see on the screen is exactly what you're going to get on any other device. No second guessing your color grades, no surprises when you export, and with that sharp resolution and wide aspect ratio, you're spending less time zooming, scrolling, or switching between windows, and more time actually creating. But honestly, it's not just about the size or the resolution. This monitor also packs in professional grade color profiles, which is huge if you're doing color critical work. It's even got BenQ's eye care tech built in, which reduces eye strain during those marathon editing sessions. Plus the matte finish, it eliminates glare, keeps distractions down and just makes the whole experience a whole lot better. To help clean up the desk and free up some space, I mounted the monitor onto this Vivo Premium Aluminum Heavy Duty Monitor Arm. It's a super solid build and even with this massive ultra wide monitor, it holds up no problem. What I love here is the range of adjustment. The height, the tilt angle, everything is customizable. And yeah, having a monitor just floating there adds to that clean minimal vibe I'm going for. Next up is the keyboard and this was a surprisingly impactful upgrade. I'm running the new Fee Halo 96 and if you're into keyboards even a little bit then you'll appreciate what this one brings to the table. It's a 96% layout so you're getting a full number pad while still keeping the footprint compact. It's perfect for a minimal desk setup like this one. The build quality is where this thing really shines. Aluminum top case, POM plates and a gasket mounted design that pairs with a layer of sound dampening silicone. Yeah it actually sounds as premium as it feels. Typing on this thing is super satisfying. The Gateron G Pro brown switches just gives you that right amount of tactile feedback without being obnoxiously loud. So whether I'm typing out scripts, editing, or just smashing through emails, it's comfortable for hours. I'm not huge on over the top RGB setups, but the Halo 96 just nails it. There's this subtle halo lighting effect that just adds the right amount of flair without turning the desk into a light show. It's clean, it's refined, and it fits the whole vibe I'm going for here. Now a really underrated piece that I gotta call out is the BenQ monitor light. If you've never used one of these, you're seriously missing out. It sits right on top of the monitor, doesn't take up any extra space, and gives you this perfectly even flicker free light that reduces eye strain especially at night or early in the morning. What I love is that it lights up the desk, not the screen, so you're never dealing with glare or reflections. And once you get used to working with one of these, it's honestly hard to go back. Alright, I gotta give a huge thanks to OBSpot for sponsoring this video and sending me over their Me Too camera. Now I've tested a lot of webcams and streaming cameras, but this one is genuinely impressive. Design wise, it fits perfectly into the setup. It's sleek, it's compact, and it comes in cloud white, space gray, or aurora green. So you can match it perfectly to your aesthetics. Spec wise, you're getting 4K at 30 FPS and a larger half inch CMOS sensor and an F1.8 aperture. Translation, this thing provides sharp, vibrant videos even in tricky lighting situations. I've been using this little thing for video calls, streaming, and even some content creation. And the image quality is way better than what you get from your typical webcam. What really sets it apart though is the AI auto framing. Whether I'm sitting still or moving around the shot, the Me Too can keep me perfectly centered. You can control the zoom and the framing with simple hand gestures, which is kind of wild and super useful if you're presenting or just solo shooting. It also has a feature called group mode, which automatically adjusts the framing if somebody else walks into the shot. 
And yeah, it's also got dual omnidirectional mics that actually pick up clean, clear audio, even if your space is a little bit noisy. Setting this thing up was a breeze with the magnetic mount and the tripod compatibility. Plus, the Ops Bot Center software gives you control over exposure, white balance, and even adds beauty and bokeh effects. Honestly, if you're looking to elevate your video setup without breaking the bank, this one's worth checking out. There is a link for you guys in the description below, and thanks to Ops Bot for sponsoring this video. Powering this whole setup is the base model M4 Mac Mini. And look, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little bit skeptical about going with the base model, but it's been holding up way better than I expected. Video editing, multitasking, all the day-to-day -day creative stuff, it chews through it all. What really helps is I'm running it vertically on this mini Soporu USB hub stand. Not only does that free up desk space, but also has a bunch of ports I actually use. It's got an SD card reader, a micro SD card slot, three USB-A ports, a headphone jack, and it even supports up to four terabytes of internal SSD expansion. Plus having it vertical does help with heat dissipation, which is huge during those longer editing sessions. And yeah, this also makes reaching for the power button a lot easier. Now we move on to the big boy, the desk itself. This is the FlexiSpot E7 Pro. Mine is the 60 by 24 inch version with white legs, and honestly, it's been perfect for my space. I've got this whole setup in the den of my condo, so having a desk space that's spacious without feeling overwhelming was key. This desk does have dual motors, smooth height adjustment, and a digital pad with presets. You know, all the good stuff. Now, if we're being honest here, I don't use the standing feature as much as I thought I would, but I guess it's nice knowing that it is there. And the cable management system is solid. It really helps keep the clutter down and the setup looking clean. The mouse of choice is probably what you'd expect. The Logitech MX Master 3. This thing's basically a productivity cheat code. It's super ergonomic, insanely customizable, and that electromagnetic scroll wheel is buttery smooth. I've got all the buttons mapped out for different apps like Final Cut Pro, Photoshop, Chrome, and it just speeds up the workflow across the board. This thing is honestly the goat mouse if you are right-handed. I also do want to give an honorable mention to the Orbit Key desk mat. I'm using the large size mat in black and it's kind of the unsung hero of the setup. It protects the desk, it adds a nice clean look, and the hidden document compartment plus the magnetic cable holder, small details but they make a big difference. And because this desk is also my recording space for YouTube, as you guys can see right now, I've got a few more essentials dialed in here. My Rode Audio interface stays on the desk to power up my mic setup, and I'm running it through the Elgato Wave 3 for voiceovers. This thing gives you clean, crisp audio, and it does come in at a budget price tag. For the lighting back there, I've got the Elgato Key Light. Lighting is something that I used to overlook, but once I added this, it's been a total game changer. It keeps my shots consistent, professional, and honestly, it makes me look a lot better on camera. All right, so before I wrap this up, I want to touch on why I picked some of these specific accessories. Because none of this is random, everything here has solved a problem or makes my day-to-day -day workflow a lot smoother. Like the Nufi Halo 96 keyboard. The typing experience is just elite. Those Gateron brown switches hit the sweet spot. Tactile but not loud. And the build quality just makes typing fun again. And then we got the Mimoglad office chair. I picked this up off of Amazon. It's relatively cheap. It's got ergonomic design, solid lumbar support, and the flip-up armrests are surprisingly clutch. It lets me pull up right to the desk when I'm editing for hours without feeling feeling cramped. All right, so that's been my full M4 Mac mini desk setup tour. Honestly, this build strikes the balance I was looking for. Budget friendly, clean, aesthetic, but still powerful enough to handle everything I throw at it. Every piece, whether that's the monitor, the keyboard, the camera, or the chair, adds to that experience of just having a space that's not just functional, but genuinely enjoyable to work in every single day. If you made it this far into the video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below. I would love to know who my true supporters are. And of course, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you already haven't, and turn on notifications so you do not miss the next one. I've got plenty more desk setup videos coming, so if you guys want to see more of this, make sure you do subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one, and don't forget to flex with your desk setup tech.